Okay, so with that mapping, did you come across any surprises and, and how significant is that? I mean, more broadly, how much of the ocean floor is actually mapped? Well, the ocean floor needs a lot more mapping to do. We're only about a third of the way there. Um, the Tasman Fractional Marine Park is a very giant Commonwealth Marine Reserve south of Tasmania. These marine reserves are really critical to protecting the habitat. And we were really happy to do a detour on our normal cruise to try and fill the little gaps that we had um, in the ocean mapping there. So that's great. But now we're heading back to our SR03 line where we'll continue uh, our measurement of ocean nutrients with our international participants. Okay, so tell us a bit more about the samples that you'll be taking as you do that. I understand they're collected from very deep waters. Just how deep are we talking in terms of those samples that you're collecting? Right, so we're collecting water samples all the way as deep as 6,000 metres. Um, the average depth in this region is about three to 4,000 metres. Last night we did a, a deployment down to almost 5,000 metres. And we're collecting water at different depths to measure the ocean nutrients. Now, the ocean nutrients are the building block of the ocean's ecosystem, not unlike your garden at home where you might have fertilizer to help all the plants grow. Well, this is the ocean's fertilizer, and these nutrients help grow the bacteria, the plankton, the chlorophyll that the little critters will eat, and then the bigger critters will eat them. And so understanding really the levels of ocean nutrients and how they're changing over time is really important to understanding the health of the ecosystem. And so what we've done on this voyage is we've brought 14 of our international uh, experts uh, in ocean nutrients to Hobart to board the RV investigator. They brought all their equipment and all the different methods and approaches with them. And we're taking concurrent measurements from deep in the Southern Ocean to try and understand how our methods compare in various parts of the world and how we can improve our methods going forward so that we can improve the estimates of ocean health. This is really exciting stuff. And so when it comes to those nutrient levels, what do we know already about how those levels have been changing in recent years? Well, what we know is that the, the nutrient levels in different parts of the world's oceans are, have a different composition. So the composition of nutrients in the North Atlantic is different than the South Pacific is different than the Southern Ocean. And all these nutrient changes um, can yield to changes in productivity, changes in how fish schools react, changes in how some of the big cetaceans move around. And so it's important for us to understand how those occur. And most importantly for basins like the Southern Ocean, um, the upwelling process is the process of mixing the surface water with the deep water, changes in those circulations can have a really big impact into how the productivity of the ocean changes. Now in the Southern Ocean, we have some very deep water that circulates very slowly vertically. So it gives us a very good historical baseline for which to compare the changing oceans near the surface. And so these are these changes are really important to map as we as we try and understand the climate and the impacts of the ecosystem. Andreas Marich, it's fascinating to speak to you. Best of luck for the journey. Uh, we really hope the mission goes as well as uh, you're hoping and you can collect all the samples you need. Fascinating to talk to you. Really appreciate you making the time. I hope we haven't made our viewers too sick with that gentle rocking we can see going on in the background <laughs> of your shot there. We hope the weather is kind to you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks very much.